You're tuned into the Trap House Rocks show. Miss LB Management. Blackster Rock. 063. Eventlevel.com. Promoting Indie. Indie Republic. We are Indie. Blonde and T.Y. Go some Ray Kwan. Big Daddy Kane. 91 Nas. 92 Big Gear. 94 Pop. I cook a whole brick and let my whole house I got a rock. Truck. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Trap House Rocks. Man, you already know I'm Miss LB. I got my crew here with me. I've got Miss Greatness, as you see right there. Say hello, Greatness. We're cracking, everybody. What's How you up? doing? How you doing, Greatness? Oh, enjoying the sunlight. What's popping? We're enjoying the view. <laughs> Mike, Mike Fiore, what's good? I, I was going to say, man, like, I get into listening to that track over again. You know, the opening song to the show. I mean, I didn't want it to stop tonight for some reason. That track that you just heard for the intro for Trap House Rock is... Uh, Don D and T Y, they're out of North Carolina. Uh, they're like D Block South, and uh, they made me that track a while back. So you know, we we always love to play it though. It really rocks. It just gets you in the mood. It just gets you in the mood to start a show, you know? <laughs> right. Ziggy Wisco, what's good? What's happening? And we got Zenof Star. You'll be able to see him here shortly, but he is in the building. Um, what's happening? What's happening? It's enough. Man, I'm trying to get to the trap. I'm trying to get behind that thing, you know. So I, 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 figured, <laughs> check, I figured I'd check in while I was in motion. Right, right. Uh, we've got a great episode tonight. There's a lot of things going on in hip-hop around the world. Just things in general. Uh, the first thing that I do want to talk about um, is Biggie Smalls. Because, you know, Brooklyn officially declared May 21st Christopher Wallace Day. Okay, I, that's a big deal in Brooklyn, and I, and it should have been done before now. Uh, with that being said, you know, the Bad Boy reunion went down. And if you guys watched any of the clips or you got to make it out there to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, it was amazing how many people that P. Diddy brought out there. Okay, it was just ridiculous. Um, little Kim looked good to me, and she's been looking kind of crazy. She looked kind of good, you know. She was she, looking kind of crazy, but she looked good. I mean, she didn't look as crazy as the pictures that they put up of her. Uh, her performance was good. Um, I think he bring everybody out in their mom. I can't even name all the people. If you see it online, you already know how many people he brought out there. But uh, it was a big deal, you know. And you can actually, I think, I believe this is going to be a tour, so you can go check out. Uh, the bad boy reunion tour in in your city if you go That's on crazy. and look for i know it's coming to where i live in september so i might go out there and check it out one great moment for me there was a lot of great moments don't get me wrong the jay-z moment was good you know everything like that but uh the nas moment for me is what did it um it was i guess i just love nas so much uh let's Go ahead and take a look at the clip of Nas. If you didn't get to see it, we'll watch the Nas clip. And uh, then I'm going to let y'all see another clip right after that, uh, after we talk about it. Cyber, let's go ahead and see the Nas clip. just amazed me so much is when i don't know if you guys saw it or not but buster rhymes man he was so hyped up that his song you know was coming on the jump jump you know what I'm saying and you know how hard that song is well he had a wardrobe malfunction <laughs> and <laughs> here it is right here let's watch the wardrobe malfunction and and you know let's watch that right now Don't get sick, make a nigga wanna jump. 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 Don't get sick, make a n
He knew better. He knew better than that. Okay, he, he knew Busta. way better. I mean, you're jumping and all that fat is just coming out from under that shirt. It was retarded. Like, don't, you You should have had a wife beater on underneath at least so the fat wouldn't have hung out when your shirt was flying up. And then, you know, the air, the fan, the fans or whatever on the stage, you could see that his shirt was like blowing out while he was, so it made it even worse when he was at the end of the stage, like by the audience. So. Hey, I, I, what I'll say is uh, we need to promote, uh, you know, good physical health, man, for the for the rappers, man, because I thought Heavy D was the big Billy man, not Buster Rhymes, you know what I mean? Real rap. So, you know, I think you need to do uh, a couple sit-ups and, uh, you know, get back fit. I'm pretty sure the ladies would love to see Buster back Diesel and not with a chubby belly, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. He was definitely yeah. Diesel. Fact, like, like super, you know, so it's like, how did you make the transition? Is it you slowed down or you spend too much money? But, well, you know, RP, uh, Big Pun, we kind of seen where, you know, not being uh, in the right shape at a young age and what could happen. Well, we lost a big fun, you know what I mean? And remember Buster Rhymes was like passed out. Last time we seen him, like some good footage just when uh, that record was out and he was pumping, pumping, and then he passed out and <laughs> fell off the stage. And, and now this go around, we get to see you like, you know, belly out wild and you know, it can't be healthy. It can't be it, healthy. I did watch uh, some behind the scenes of, of him and Jay-Z and, and everybody backstage. A big shout out to DJ Ron G, who's on our station every Friday night, eight to 10, um, or eight to nine, eight to 10, it just depends. Uh, at eventlevel.com slash trap on the radio. Uh, he was out there for the event. He was with Fabulous. He was with um, just tons of people. Uh, if you go look at his page, there's pictures everywhere. Uh, the real DJ Ron G. Uh, so big shout out to him. Um, okay, brief, brief, real quick, LB, before we get past it. But for those who don't know who Ron G is, he, he was the dude who created the hip hop remix over the R&B records. You know what I mean? Yes. Ron G. Ron G's style in particular is what Puff Daddy remixes were about. You know what I mean? That whole Mary J sound, that whole uh, Joe to see R&B over hip hop beats. That was DJ Ron G. You know what I'm saying? Straight. I mean, I remember it. You know what I'm saying? Like Straight. to the, but you know, DJ Instincts from Maybach, uh, Torch Triple C's DJ told the Facebook the other day, I seen him say, no other DJ in the world gets more shout outs on mixtapes than DJ Ron G. <laughs> I said, Absolutely. of course not. So uh, we're, we're proud to have him for the last five years here at uh, Trap House Rocks Radio. So big shout out to Ron G. Um, now, that's a pretty sweet gathering period, man, of people coming together. I mean, that's you can't deny that. There's another topic about P. Diddy that I want to talk about and show you a clip. And there's also another piece of information about Brooklyn that we need to cover. So what we're going to do is I have a clip. Um, now, just bear with me here because this clip is kind of like not official official but it's official to me because i think it's relevant uh p diddy responds to what chink's mother said uh, about his death at his memorial service on the streets oh, of brooklyn so so wow. so let's watch this clip and pay attention to what he says and then to what she says if you can relate i hope you relate you know we are work in progress so let's go i found myself just like so preoccupied on just everything that else that was going on i kind of lost my focus with god and then i just came out the darkness one day and i just started to become more aware you know I, I, i'm it's not solved i still get preoccupied with that you know i'm a work in progress right now so my mind all day is on god and knowing that everything else is going to work itself out like in his will Nah, I want you to, I want, I want to use it all. Be Diddy at first you can and need to come out and see me. They ain't said nothing to me since my child been dead. Even when my child was dead, they didn't say nothing to me. So what do you, what do you want them to say to you? They need to come and see me. That's what they need to do. They should come and see me. Be Diddy and French. 
And why do you feel so strongly that they need to come forward and talk with you? Because I'm Lionel's mother. I need answers. That's why. Do you feel disrespected? All the way. Yes, they disrespect me. All the way. Not even at the funeral? At the funeral? Only thing French said to me, I asked French, why did y'all do that to my child? He said, because he wouldn't listen. And I told French, you're not his father, but I am his mother. That Out here shooting guns, <laughs> killing each other, for what? For what? Over territory that ain't even his? Over projects that ain't even his? Come on. No, we don't even, don't we don't no even really know, you know, what happened. It don't make no sense. Yeah. We know what happened. It's all connected. With stack funders and Ron Nels is connected. I'm telling y'all. It's going to come it's out. It's connected. Do you believe there'll be a resolution? Because it seems like the cops really are working hard on this. I hope so. I really do. Well, what can they do if nobody's talking? You know, it's like the hip-hop code I of mean, silence. Yeah, that's how the streets are. You know, that's the code of the streets. Nobody be want to be labeled as a snitch. You know, that would make it bad on them. Somebody might kill them. Basically, somebody probably put that together saying he don't really have no answer uh, for her. Um, the thing that she said about French saying he wouldn't listen, she's right in a way because everybody says, you know, chinks could not stay out the hood. You're on another level now. You need to yeah. get out the hood because you're a celebrity and you just can't be everywhere. But and then you heard his mother say stack bundles uh, and his was related. You know, what I'm saying uh, to each other. What do you guys think? Go ahead, Ziggy. Take over, man. Okay, man. Right. No comment, Zenith Star. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this much. Do you man. think it was disrespectful for? I mean, you know, P Diddy is huge, and so French doing their thing. Do you think it's disrespectful for them not to come out to the memorial? I don't, because you know, obviously they have other things to do. I'm not saying that it's not important, but you can't expect somebody to drop what they have to come out there. You know what I mean, I'm saying? Am I wrong? That, uh, I, I, I speak on that, what you just said. They should have you know contacted her two, though afterwards. Two, I mean, two different ways. You look in that, and I can speak on, I'm going to speak you know, on Diddy that have as well as like French, just knowing of and knowing you know, certain individuals, but it is like a person that big and something that dramatic happens. Those are two people that have been connected or down this road before with just, you know, other artists and other things. So it's like that being one precaution and two being a safety precaution, the way it happened, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, like people got to think of it like that for one, you know what I mean? Like right. both of those brothers are highly connected to the streets and people that are still in the streets. And, you know, the other thing I would say about my brother Chink's drugs, man, RP always, man, I love the dude, yeah. man. Like if anything, every, I, I had three real moments with Chink's and they were real, very real moments. You know what I'm saying? They weren't, you know, a nigga putting up no kind of front or, or no fraudulent shit. Yeah. So, you know, they, they say like some of us can't leave the streets alone, but how? Only The only ones that know how deep is the person themselves, you know what I mean? Because there ain't, there's things that we don't tell everybody or everybody just don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Love Stack Bundle is the same. Do I right. feel like sometimes things are connected? It's like we all always, something always is a piece of a puzzle to something else. So it's like, you know, whatever the mom feels, I'm pretty sure they can work it out. The same, you know, same anger Miss Wallace had when Biggie was, assassinated it was you know where's puppy I, you know i heard different things and then when i heard puppy got right who knows how puppy had to deal with it or how french has to deal with it you know what i'm saying that that's a frenchy man you know what right. I'm saying? so throughout all the speculations people could make and all the you know the the bullshit that people always make up you know what i mean whether it's true or false we will never know man those those things are between man and god the niggas it's got the bullshit to with that. it's the bullshit that gets repeated is fucking everything up too yes, and that's why that's why we are not playing part you know we ain't we giving you a true a true honest answer you know right. what I'm saying? who knows why the buzz wasn't there but 
the same thing with, with, with when Biggie got killed. It was, you know, how of a of how much of a risk it was for everybody that was in Junior Mafia. Everybody that was so, you're right. The they all do it too. I'm a, I, 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 to the stylist. I remember my aunt, and you know, uh, set out in the Mickens. And I remember like being around and and, and knowing that the, the threat calls was coming before Biggie got murdered and after he got murdered. And I was a young kid. You took a 15, 14 years old, or how was it? But we were around people in the business, so knowing how Ziggy knows, man, we from the we from the gridlock. Same as, same as with Miss LB, I'm not trying to fight Miss LB or greatness because we we from you know very trapezoid district, so we know the shit. So it's like this, that it could be his mom or her feelings, like she could be relaying something out of anger. Not trying to fight, you know, her right. as well, but the same like that's her side. You know what I'm saying? It's, Ziggy, it's, it's, that's her what was you going to say about it? I, I was just going to say, like, you know, the, that's, this is how everything all just changed because nothing ain't like how this shit used to be. You, if, you, if your mans get killed, if your mans get killed and you don't go reach out to his OG and make sure she's straight on every level which way possible, then you really wasn't that nigga's man like he thought. You know what I'm saying? That's or right. maybe you tied into some shit, some fuckery somehow, some way. Because this how it go in the hood. Like this yeah, how I've known it to always be. When nigga don't reach out, when nigga don't reach out, man, it be something. It be some food. Something. Food, yeah, yeah, but but Come on, like man. I said, like I said too, let's let's look at both sides. So it's like I heard pun wife a whole bunch of stuff about Joe and different people during the times. I heard different stories of different situations, but so let's say maybe he's not reaching out to the mom, but let's say maybe he's reaching out to the baby mother and the kid. Like, you understand me? So it's like, these are just, this is just a part of the story. I'm pretty, there's no way that there's well, when money's being that close. Yeah. When you're, involved, you never know. That's right, Mike. What he said, when money's involved, these women who may be the baby mama or even the mother sometimes may be expecting something greater than what's no, but what, what happened. What you know what I'm saying? I, it could be anything. I, I follow his baby mom on, on Instagram and I never see, you know, negative towards French or right. a Diddy. That's why I'm making a statement that right, I'm making. Right. You know what I mean? I've been following her since I, I, SIP, the homie Chinks Jones right. passed, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Like sometimes people be calling their feelings. Who knows if that right. interview was a, a recording from three days after, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you don't know with, with and, media, people manipulate shit so crazy sometimes, you know And I mean? nevertheless, they're hurt. You know what I'm saying? Of course they're hurt. Well, yeah, the, one yeah. thing, the one thing yeah. that always uh, bothered me about the music business, because you know, a lot of us work behind the scenes, okay? So say you're working on a project for like a year, two years and on this on this person developing and all of a sudden something happens to him and he gets shot and killed well he still had a lot of people that put a lot of years into depending on them actually making it yes lord so, i know all too well yeah so you, you know that there's all sides you know that's the worst feeling in the world to a mom and boy a child leaving this world before her yeah, yeah. come on man yeah, niggas, niggas 40 niggas 40 yeah. years old you been seeing niggas get killed all your motherfucking life, boy. If you can't deal with a motherfucker getting killed and keeping that shit a hundred, man, ten toes, then you need to get the fuck out that lane because there's somebody else that needs to drive that lane. You know what I'm saying for them and they people. Mm, mm. Right, so I'm a, well, I'm a, let's, let's let's take the attention off of excuse me, Tink's drugs and, and French and Diddy for a minute. Let's let's talk about uh, big homies in general. Now, I feel like a big homie in general, if you up and you that up on the totem pole and you saying like, yo, little bud, you keep playing and I don't want you to be out here playing, then by all means, you should keep that nigga close. You know what I mean? Case in point, like Jay did with a bleak or, or, you understand? It's like, it's, it's yeah. different methods to, it's different methods to things. You can't say that I've, I've done and I'm doing all that I could and not do that. Because then when things happen of this nature, you, you are to blame as well. You understand? Yeah. Because if, if I got a record label, if, let's put it like this, B. If I, if I had Sean Carter money, right? <laughs> there's no way that there's an artist that I got out and they got a record out. There's no way that they're not covered and they're hovered like the old days. Right. You understand? Like, yeah. So it's like we still, too, as 
Now, I'm a younger bro, but I'm becoming a big homie in stature with the things that I'm doing out here, television, radio, record labels, and things of that nature. But all, all my front line is all, everybody on my first line right now. Bad Lungs is from my first line. He is right. eating with, there's, there's no, you know, I know where my blood is at. Even artists that are, that are you know, not signed to me, those artists that I represent on the Patterson music industry, when we moving around the city, it's like, hey, bro, where you at with it? You know, I heard a lot of things going on in the city right now. Lay low tonight because this such and such and such is crazy. So it's like, you're going to be a big homie, be a big homie for real. Even if you got other responsibilities now, you know, like you doing television and all this other shit. Because some of those brothers right. are very high up on the totem pole. But keep your young artists active. And then, you know, we can't have mishaps. Look how many mishaps we had in the trap house. So many artists that we've been banging that, <laughs> you know, died unfortunately. Or, you know what I'm saying? That's things right. Happen. There's been a few, quite a few, actually. Very, you know, I mean, very serious. Very quite a serious. few. Um, you know? I do want to do this. There's something else going on in Brooklyn, okay? And it's pretty serious uh, because it involves me, my team member, um, hip hop in general. Um, Shabam Sadiq, okay? You guys know him. We all love him here. I've been working with him for almost five years, four or five years. I think it's five now. Um, you know, Shabam works very hard on his craft and he doesn't get into the internet beefing back and forth and the bullshit you know what i'm saying he's a very serious artist but this time he's in a beef and it's serious it's not uh your average hip-hop beef because like i said shabam doesn't do this uh he is beefing with lord digga do you guys know who lord digga is hey. right yes yes mike i got to know him in the last few days <laughs> Oh, so prior, you didn't know who he was. Right. Prior. I, I was going to say, ain't that one of them niggas from Flip Mode Squad or something? <laughs> no. Think more back like Master Ace days. Okay, so right. so the thing was, um, Lord Digga was on a radio interview with Elite Fleet and a record label, and um, he basically said, you know, this is personal. This is not business. This is for you, Shabam Sadiq. But he didn't call him that. He said a fucked up name, how he said his name. Um, I sent it to you guys. I know that I want to hear what Zeno has to say about it. And then Mike, and then I'll tell you what I learned about it after the fact. Zeno Star, what did you think of the diss that Lord Digga did against Shabam Sadiq? Now, Shab Shabam Sadiq has not replied yet, mind you. Well, everyone else is replying for him. <laughs> you don't need to. I think the thousands of fans, thousands of fans that Shabam has, when this guy put this video out, all these people just looked at him as a jack, complete jackass. And so the guy fried himself by putting it out, period. Shabam does not okay. need to reply. L let me tell the people, because I can't tell you how to go find it, because I'm not giving them any more promo. If you want to find it, you'll find it. Um, he obviously wrote the diss. The beat come on. He did like a bar, like two or three or four bars. I don't know how many. I wasn't counting. And then he messed up his words and then told the DJ to rewind it back. The whole time he's rapping, though, he wrote this. He had cheerleaders in the back saying his words with him. And it's just. He sounded like. I think Shabam should murder him, though, man. <laughs> like, Listen, out the track and murder I'll him. give you a little piece of information. Now, I could have leaked something tonight, but I decided not to because it's going to be big. I watched the reply. It's not only a little rap on SoundCloud. It's a video, official video. Uh, I'll give you a hint about this. Shabam is holding a skull that's on fire. <laughs> He's rapping to it. Uh, it's amazing. Um, I, it, it just left me speechless. I saw two clips. Um, it's it's a murder. Okay, and that's what he says when he comes on. This is a murder. So you got to look for that next week. On the next episode, we will play that, okay, for you. That way, all you people who are watching us can find it. You just look on our channel because even if we don't have it on the show, I'm going to do it exclusively the, the minute it comes out. 
So you have to follow Shabam Sadiq, and it's coming next week. He, he didn't oh. want to do it too soon, but it's already done. He was in England, and he he he, he did it. it. It's amazing. Just wait. Mike's going to die. Well, I have to say also, I mean, I'm dying to hear the reply, but also I want everyone to be safe, too. You know what I mean? Like, what kind of beef we got going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah, because, hey. like, people are ready to punch each other and shit. Yeah. Well, when I, I say this much, right? With, when I seen the visual, first and foremost, I was like... <laughs> he wants free. I felt, like, I felt like it was like... Some old footage of 50 Cent. You, know <laughs> you sound like Papa Doc on 8 Mile, but really slow and worse, like fucked up. <laughs> you know, but look, I don't want to fight Lord Digger when I see you. Right. I'll probably be, I'll probably be with a bunch of bitches anyway that, you know, will probably jab your ass up. But um, I don't want no problems with, I'm just saying, I don't even understand why you did it. You know what I mean? Really. For free for promo, obviously. For two, you know, like, Legendary niggas ain't really supposed to be doing that. Especially, you should know Shabam is like he is a specialist. Like, yeah, it's not like you did it to. I mean, uh, what I'm saying is, if you're gonna do it, try do it to somebody like huge, super huge name in every household. Why not? Why are you doing it to Shabam, who has nothing to do with you? Uh, your, and uh, and he also mentioned, you know, this guy mentioned. Duck down and you know Bucktown in his rap and he's uh, he said he know, told uh, your family he said you're not a low life you're a no life woo you know like <laughs> come on now he's he's well, going really deep with him I can't wait to see like I want to know what the beef really spawned from because my respect for Lord Digger was like you Me know too. I had a lot of respect for him I didn't understand this and it was just like what the fuck is going on. In the rap, you know? he talks about Shabam being a barber, which I don't see anything wrong with that. He talks about Shabam working at Subway, which he does not. It's stupid and whack. Uh, he talks about him doing drugs. He doesn't do drugs. Come on now. And he, that's basically, you know. But like, where the fuck did the shit even come from? I heard him saying some other, you know, I know like, the other shit, I'm like, who was he really talking to? You know, I didn't, you know. Well, the guy was, was supposed, into. he was supposed to be freestyling and, you know, supposedly he was freestyling and then he stopped and repeated the same shit. Like, he wasn't restyling, he was rehearsing. <laughs> well, you know? uh, I mean, it, it was a bad look. You know, we yeah. live on the World Wide Web. This is something that people should know. Like, it was a bad look. You know, what the I mean? thing is, leave that alone because I'll just say it. You don't come at Shabam Sadiq. You better have. You better have something. You you better be on point if you're coming at him. He's a, he's Maybe. a specialist, like he said, and that's all I'm gonna say yeah, about a that. A lot of people love him. Too. You guys look uh, out for the video okay and song it's coming next week and you'll see it everywhere online because see the major blogs follow shabam so hip-hop dx all the big two dope boys they'll probably all get this uh shout out to lord digger for his free promo it's still you like gotta, bring you, you gotta, back you got a hashtag damn digger that's the new hashtag damn, damn digger. Digger. damn digger. um uh, nah i don't want to give that away i was gonna say one of shabam's lines <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do Come it. Come on, give it to us. <laughs> Wait on He's, it. He said something about to the nature of basically that it all went together. You know, I don't remember all the words, but something about he's like Jamal from eight, uh, Empire. Um, anyway, so on that note, all every <laughs> every week we do exclusive videos here. And the two videos that I have tonight, we're not going to play them back to back. I'll do one and then I'll do another one later. The first one comes from Marley Mar. It's an artist that I've been working with heavy. Uh, it's called 20 Junkies. And the reason that I put it on here tonight is because it's brand new and because it's shot by GT Films. And uh, it follow GT Films Productions. Um, Friday. Hold on. The two videos tonight are both shot by GT Films. One of them is Marley Mar and one of them is Birdman. Uh, I've watched GT Films grow since last year to shooting Nephew Texas Boy and shooting himself and local artists in Atlanta to now shooting major celebrities. So big, big shout out to GT nice. Films for, for the come up. I don't think he's even shooting indie artists anymore. He's Hasa Diddy now. And he has a reason to be. He's grown. Uh, big shout out to him. Let's watch Marley Mart 20 Junkies right now. 
Junkies, Marley Mart. Check him out, Marley Mart Music on YouTube. Check him out on World Star Hip Hop. He's got four new videos that we dropped in the last two weeks on World Star Hip Hop. Just search World Star Hip Hop for Marley Mart. And he's got two more coming. Three more coming, sorry. Uh, so they're crazy. GT Films, big shout out to him. Follow him, GT Films Productions. You put the, the, kid, the kid is young. He's a great videographer. I mean, he's insane. Yeah, he's been beating up my Instagram because I, you know, every time he tweets something out or puts something out there, I gotta watch the whole thing, and then I go to Twitter and I gotta watch. I, I don't have to. I like to. So right. Up on my Twitter time. Now you guys know that I do a little bit of research before I come on here each time, and I found a clip. It's a clip. I'll just tell you now that um, this guy, this rapper. He says, and he's telling you, I want y'all to see him and tell me what you think about him. And um, he says that he is going to have the hardest mixtape out this summer, harder than anybody in the game. His Listen, name, his this, name is King. If I had a dollar for every time somebody said that to me, I'd be a millionaire right now. But when you see him <laughs> say it, he's for real. Like he's telling you. Know, you. you. You know who had the hardest mixtape ever? Who? <laughs> Young Jeezy, Trap or Die, man. Yeah, you're right. That was great. Definitely. But that was now, one of them, definitely. I wish Xenob Star could see this clip right here because uh, you'll see the reason that I put it up on here. 
uh, or you could just listen to him talk Z and uh, all the uh, people out there, you can watch this clip right now. He is going to have the hardest mixtape out this summer. This is hip hop. Watch this. I bet I put the hardest mixtape out this summer. You hear me? I bet money. All these upcoming, except for Lil Uzi, I fuck with Lil Uzi tough. But the rest of them fucking upcoming, y'all niggas gotta come with it, bro. Y'all niggas ain't fucking with KY. KY too go, go too fucking hard if you let that. Damn it. I bet, I bet, I bet I have the fucking hardest mixtape this summer. Thug, I've already read about him and everything. He, um, go ahead, Ziggy. You, you go I ahead. Was, I was just saying, I seen one of his videos. Was it good? Was it good, Ziggy? He ain't saying. <laughs> and that tells you right there. Um, I, I was just blown away. And we'll just look out for his mixtape. Would you guys listen to it? Uh, I mean, I think Hell that... Hell yeah, that, for that, pure that, comedy. That dude's problem is he's watched too much TV, man. <laughs> That's it. Man, motherfuckers make gangbangers look so bad. Go ahead, Ziggy. No, I was saying, motherfuckers make gangbangers look so bad, okay? It's evident that he copying the blood, so he want to be blood, or he might be blood with some blood set. But I bet you, I bet you, T. Rogers, I bet you every day T. Rogers wake up and he, and he cry. Because it's, it, cause there's so many people that just want to be blood so bad, and they don't <laughs> even really understand what that shit means. Well, you go to California, oh, my mama, I've been, when I was in Cali, them niggas take that shit so motherfucking serious. I'm talking about just a whole nother level that people wouldn't even understand. If that nigga was in Cali, they would, man, they probably would have rolled on that nigga so hard. Who will do that out here looking all like that and do that shit? That's Hollywood. I don't think anyone's going to take him serious, to be honest with you. So. That shit's spelling. He, I, I, I checked him out. I seen him. I had seen him. And I, so I started checking him out and peeping and shit, what he had going on. And I noticed that he has a lot of followers. Yeah. Nobody real, though. It's going to make a difference. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, we'll see what it. Ain't no gang like. members going to feel threatened by that kid. Nah. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Who the, who the fuck is he? K-Y-N-G. Okay, he has a look to him, Z. You'll just have to... I'll send it after the show and let you look at him on Instagram. Um, what I want to do right now is... No more clips right now. I didn't even bring any for this topic because this serious. The Billboard Awards last night, a lot went on. Okay, first of all, um, I didn't watch the whole thing because you know I don't watch TV. But I did catch some after-the-fact clips. Um, Rihanna, she killed it. Like, she killed her song so bad. It was just incredible to see her do that on the stage. Uh, her song was incredible. Um, Madonna, you know, at the end, she did a tribute to Prince. Okay, and my thing was this. Here's the problem I had with it. Madonna did Nothing Compares to You. Okay, first of all, why do you people keep using Nothing Compares to You just because Prince wrote it for Sinead O'Connor? If you was going to do that, you should have had Sinead O'Connor sing it because Madonna don't sing that way. You can't, and everybody's saying it was garbage. What do you expect from Madonna? She's a pop singer. She doesn't sing like Sinead O'Connor. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't sing like the song was made to be sung. You feel me? So don't be down in her. You know what I'm saying? They made her sing that song. Now, a good part was when Stevie Wonder came out there uh, and they did it together, Purple Rain and all that stuff. But, you know, all these people are tripping on Madonna. That's not the way the songs that she be singing anyway. So I don't know why they're tripping, but I thought it was terrible. Maybe they had just had a special relationship her and Prince. I don't know. Well, they did. I, of course they did. Everybody knows that. But the so, thing is, why well, are you? Why did the people doing this show make her do nothing compares to you just because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You should have did darling Nikki, you're Madonna. You should have did something from Prince that you could actually sing. Darling. I bet you Something. I, you know what I'm saying? She could have did another song. I bet you Prince, I bet you Prince fucked every rock and roller's wife. Yeah, of course. But that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is why <laughs> did the people of the show make her do Sinead's song? That's Sinead O'Connor's song. Even though Prince wrote it. You feel me? Like, why didn't you just have her come sing it and then let Madonna and Stevie Wonder do Purple Rain? She might not. Hey. Sinead might not even do music anymore. She's always been weirding out there, man. True that. Hey. Just play the song. Why you got to have Madonna trying to sing something that she's not capable of singing is what I'm saying. 
you know, you know what I was just thinking about in my head. It might sound crazy, but before Abalonia came along, before Prince came along with Abalonia, what no white women in hip hop? And none of that. You notice that? Peep that though. Check that out. Before he came along with Abalonia, it was white women didn't exist in that part of music. Madonna. Nah. She's pop. I mean, all day. Her, Cindy Lauper, all of them, you know, they're pop. Now, another big factor of the night was, of course, they didn't show the rap awards on major television, but they did behind the scenes, and Meek Mill took home that album, best album, you know what I'm saying? Over Kendrick Lamar, over Dre, over who else? Uh, um, um, wow. Future, over who else? Ziggy? Um, Drake. Drake, he took home best album. You know why? Because this is not judged on voters or some panel or some shit. It's based off sales. Meek oh, Mill sold more gosh. records than every single one of them. So, like me and Ziggy were talking about earlier, Meek Mill won that battle. Yeah. As of last night, he took home best album. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a period. Right there. Even though they bought it to see probably he what. <laughs> he lost the battle, but he won the war. Yeah. That's right. There you go. There no, you but that's that not so. That's not so. It's anyway, Drake already got, he already got Billboard awards. So he can't win the war. He won the war. He, no, war. Sure. he, he didn't win the war. That nigga. As soon as Nicki Minaj leave his ass, then what? Nobody's not even playing Meek Mill's records right now. You right. know what I'm saying? Who's playing? Who's playing his shit on the radio? Drake. I listen like, to Meek Mill over Drake. But obviously, nah, people bought the album because he took it nah. home over all the other guys. Now, I was gonna say, no, millions of people are listening they, to. You think, <laughs> you, think, you, think, you think that that shit was paid for? Cause I like Meek no Mill. Way. Ziggy yeah, said, I do too. But there's no way Meek Mill is selling more records than Drake. I'm sorry. Listen, I don't know that. Listen to this. This, you know, this is why BG and Soldier Slim had that CD coming out called They Never Seen It Coming. See, this is why they killed Soldier Slim. Because, see, these niggas is doing some street shit in, with these streets that people don't even pay attention to. You got underground artists and niggas who sell the millions of records. And people just really don't have a clue to really what a lot of shit be going on. So now you got to think about something. Everybody in the streets fuck with Meek Mill and every motherfucker hood in the mirror. It's not like that with Drake. You go in the hood, you won't hear a lot of Drake in the motherfucking hood. Now, you hear it in the suburbs and shit like that on the radio, but go to them hood spots in the hood and niggas in there with them burnt CDs. You got all of me on every CD. But maybe like we talked about earlier, uh, you, tell, you took all that really, street money and bought your own uh, record. That's why you sold. Let me tell you, tell, tell you the realest yeah. shit ever, bro. Can you name me two singles off? Fucking Meek Mill's nope. last album. Nope. Show sure can't. Alright, case in point. <laughs> nigga. And I don't, am hip hop. It don't matter. What was his last Dream Traces part two, right? Yeah, I can't even tell you the single off that shit instead of the only record Dream niggas play from this listen, bro. We're talking to a nigga that know this shit. The only thing niggas play off that last shit up top from fucking Philly to motherfucking South Carolina. I used to remember days like this and times like that. I used to have to. That's the only record, my nigga. Nobody plays shit else. You know what I'm saying? So Drake hasn't stopped playing since Lil Wayne went to jail, my nigga. Facts. I don't know what somebody's telling you, but Drake never, he ain't go off the radio. You know the only nigga who took Drake off the radio for a little bit was Fetty fucking Wop because he had four records back to back. But that's it. Like niggas up top, they are not playing Dream Chasers two. They playing shit off Dream Chasers one. Nobody. I don't even know that fucking record, dog. The only record I, the, the only other record I can tell you about is the shit with Nicki Minaj, and I'm not sure if that was her her record featuring him. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I can't call it, my nigga. He ain't win the battle or the war. Like he he Everywhere. didn't show up. And started that shit. He started yeah. that shit, my nigga, and he didn't show up when Drake chewed his ass. If you gonna tell me, if you gonna tell me Drake motherfucking his two back to back, that back to back and that other disc record wasn't one of the most dominant fucking disc records since Ether and fucking all of that shit, my nigga, no, no, nothing else mattered. That nigga made a fucking top forty disc record. That's because you got to chick riders. 
Nah, bro. <laughs> maybe you, you, maybe they bought their own nah, records. Okay, anybody, like, anybody tell me, anybody tell me Drake don't make good music? You want some good drugs, man? Nobody did not think he make good music. That what I fuck with is my point, and what I fuck with, I fuck with that street shit. You know what I'm saying? And shorty that from shit don't, shorty from that shit don't sell. That shit, shit don't sell records, man. You when know what I'm saying? That shit don't sell records. He just proved that's a different because he just outsold all they had. No, that's bullshit. Niggas buy it. There's no way that nigga. You understand what they? They're not. With Drake's album that just came out, probably sold more than that shit right now. But that'll be retracted next year, 2017 Billboard. You understand me? The time framing is off. They calculating shit from like 11 months ago, my nigga. That yeah. don't got nothing to do with all the shit you heard this year. Maybe you know Nicki, maybe Nicki Minaj bought all those records so that he'd win. I did something. Man. <laughs> that was a big talk with him. And he even gave him out for free at the concert. Now. Rick Ross, Rick Ross put that nigga on punishment and you waving the fucking meat mail flag, my nigga. Come on, cuz. Like, that nigga he fucked up in the game, bro. He mm. fucked up in the game. You supposed right. to be a street, it was a street battle. Let's, 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 tell, let's tell the truth right now. Because right, I'm tired of niggas truth. like, you, 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 the truth. With this Hollywood, this Hollywood <laughs> ass foo foo, this, this nigga ain't, this nigga be talking about walls in the six. That nigga ain't gonna bust the motherfucking break the Welch's backyard. Nigga, he always, he always claiming Houston. What Pimp C say? What Pimp C say? Nigga, get off our, off our dick, nigga. We don't fuck with you like that, boy. You Bro, better you Pimp, C was, Pimp C was talking to Drake? That's what he was talking to when yeah, he said that? Yeah, we was talking to. All right, why, none, why all them other niggas in Houston fucking with them then? That's my case in point. We can't have this argument because I make the differ on all that shit. It's time to bum me and say, please. My nigga, it's time. It's time niggas start respecting Drake as a god. He's mastered it. Niggas say he couldn't do street shit. He did that. I fucked with that nigga all day. Didn't Drake, just, didn't Drake just sign a battle rapper nigga that always be rapping about touching his dick? What, the, the same nigga who said he'll fuck T.I. because T.I. look cute. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, I, ain't, I ain't hear none of that I'll shit. tell you what. Let's... I just know this. That nigga Meek Mill started to be, right? Yeah. And you the real street nigga like, y'all fuck with that street nigga shit, street nigga shit. Why he ain't do some street nigga shit and come with a rebuttal ASAP? Cause my man slapped his ass the fuck up. That's the case in point. So oh. Meek Mill could get, listen, Meek Mill could get mad at me. He could get mad at whoever. That is the fact, dog. Oh. That is the fact. Who feels, G, they got people behind the scenes that be like, y'all cool that shit out. That's no. what it be. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to cool out for a second. I want to ask you guys a question. Okay, we're going to totally, totally switch it up. Who in here that's here with me right now does iPhone versus Android? Who does the iPhone in here? I do. I'm a, I'm a Mac. I do not fuck with PC. Okay, so your yeah. iPhone? I'm iPhone out. Android and, is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. And, and Mike's iPhone. I'm mac out too. And the other three are Androids. Okay, well, have you Mac users saw the new iPhone 7 yet? No. Let's take a look at this clip. Okay, you gotta pay close attention uh, to this brand new iPhone 7 that's coming. Let's watch that clip, Cyber. Your job's still alive. <laughs> The, the clip was a joke, but Mike, you know, I guess they did that because, oh, I mean, iPhone, it's great and everything, like you say, but I mean, how much, are they saying how much bigger is it going to get or small or like, what are, what are they saying I, with that? I haven't, listen, I'm, I'm still, I still miss my Blackberry for heaven's sakes. <laughs> what do you think they're saying, stating in that? I, they're just making fun of it. They got, I mean, right. no, of course. I, Basically. I, I, I just say this though, man. Anybody who is going to lie and say Android or or Androids aren't better phones than iPhones are telling lies. You know what I'm saying? The reason why, you know, I prefer to fuck with the iPhone because everything I use in my world of Same computers here. and music and everything is Mac. You know what yep. I'm saying? So I used to be like that. 
I have to have an iPhone. But Androids by far, they're always more cutting edge. They always have better apps because, you know, the only thing I hate about the, the one default that I hate most about an iPhone, if you send me an email, I cannot download that MP3 to my phone. That's right. You know, yes, that's the that only thing right. that I do it. No, you can't download it to your yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, you know, you Android to- Android, you could download it. You could download the MP3 straight to your phone, and you're yeah. good to go. You know, but you know, I, I will. I if I wasn't uh, a total when it comes to what we do, film, music, and I gotta have a Mac. You know, I won't. I won't. I'll fuck up someone's PC to the maximum. So it's like, <laughs> That's what I thought when I. But then when I started college, I was like, yeah, I gotta get the PC. So I got. Yeah, I, I have yeah. both, and I, I'm. I'm good on both now. But I was Mac till I died a couple years ago. How I got my first Mac, I was going to the studio, and the owner of the studio, we go in there for these sessions every night, and everybody had uh, Macs, but me, I still have my PC, my Dell computer, right? And I bring it in my laptop. <laughs> he used to look at me one night, he said, I tell you what, Mikey, you take that fucking computer and you go throw it in the bay, and I'll buy you a brand new uh, MacBook. And I went right over to the bay and threw it in, and I've been in love ever since, you know? Well, we'll see what that new iPhone 7 is going to look like. Obviously, it's not going to look like that. Not three foot long. Um, Now, earlier, I played you a video from GT Films, uh, videographer GT Films. I told you that he's been shooting for some big time people. So tonight, we're going to play that brand new Birdman Stunna video shot by GT Films right here on this episode of Trap House Rock. Yeah. Rich, rich, gang, gang, rich, nigga, shit. Rich, rich, nigga, fuck, bitch, nigga, we pull up empty, that bitch, nigga, fuck, fuck, nigga, be poppin' shit, cause they cowards, nigga, we rich, nigga, big money, no chips, nigga, garbage bag, we dip, nigga, we start out with money, power, and marble floors of them bricks, nigga, nigga, jump back on them air laws. Project life with a hundred cars, moving around like superstars, double clips and them double jaws, chandelier of my hope, nigga, calico for that smoke, nigga, we move nothing but that boy, nigga, moon rocking that hard, nigga, she moved me, so I taped the hoe, hundred G's off the and flow, we lamb down and we break the hoe, we get them in, move, shake the hoe, we them niggas, we bend them niggas, them pussy niggas be hating, no, we chop them up, we put them down and we line them down and then take a hoe, wow, hundred extra rounds, everywhere we flip, a hundred extra pounds Everywhere we dip Popped out with a hundred toys Do a nigga with a hundred boys Move spots, hundred boy Move things, a hundred boy Every time we flip something They know we them stunner boys Every time we ship something They know them whips be coming boy bah. My little nigga caught a bend. I told my little, I'ma go lay it down. I'ma make sure we all win. Make sure we get in. Got a hundred mil on my pen. Flash of life and it's nothing but ice when you jump across that fence. Jump back and we got back. Show them niggas we did that. Came back, hold that. Gave a nigga a hundred stacks. Show them that. Bounce back, put him down. He got that. Them little niggas be putting it down. So we show them niggas how we did that. Fuck, 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 fuck. Bust back, we don't play, nigga. Bust back, we gon' spray, nigga. We bustin' out the one way, nigga. Honey G's a honey show. A hundred niggas with a hundred hoes. Bah! Hundred extra rounds. Everywhere we flip, a hundred extra pounds. Everywhere we dip, popped out with a hundred toys. Do a nigga with a hundred boys. Move spot, hundred boy. Move things, a hundred boy. Every time we flip something, they know we them stunner boys. Every time we ship something, they know them whips be coming, boy. Bah! Yeah, for real though. Up here, boy. I just smoke. Anything about that money, my nigga. Everything about that money, my nigga. Fuck. You know, Bezo, God, I kill one of you pussy niggas. Bleh! Bleh! Bitch, rich gang alone. Yeah, see, you a bad bitch. Bitch, love a gangster. We with all that bullshit. Beto, bah! GT Films. Play that video here for you tonight. Uh, I got you. Also, shout out Fuse808 on that beat right there. Uh, shout out to the whole 808 Mafia. Um... It's crazy right now. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's the fam right there. Um, 
you know, I, I, I just love to see somebody grow in their craft. I know that I'm going to see the same thing from TMP Films. Uh, he's a guy out of Atlanta. Uh, his very first video that he ever shot that I didn't know it was his first video was Bricks In, the Project Pat, Nephew, oh, Texas really Boy, and Tracy T video. That was his first video, so I was real proud of that. Uh, so Wait, right 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 well, well, that's not his video right there, but... I'm talking about TMP. His, I didn't know that it was his first video. If I'd have known that, I'd have been like, hold up, what you mean? It's your first video. But uh, he come with it. I mean, he brought it with that bricks in. And uh, mm. now there's a, a video shoot. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a video shoot, a movie shoot that we're all going to go out to uh, next month. Uh, it's, it's for a movie that's coming. I'm mentioning this because I want you to look out for it in the future. Dope sold, money fold. Okay, it's it's. I, I can't give you too much about it, but I do know that Bankroll Fresh is in it. Uh, it's his last thing that he did before he got murdered. I know that Zenith Star will probably come down to the shoot. I'll be at the shoot. Project Pat, um, you know, just everybody. It's going to be crazy. I talked to Blue Da Vinci yesterday. He's going to come out. Everybody's going to come out. You um, to scope this event, LB. I will we definitely. It's it's gonna be a swimming pool scene, so there'll be tons of Atlanta strippers there, and we'll periscope that for you. Um, I want to. You're the best periscoper ever, LB, because you you put it on nice looking women for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're the best. I'm just, how many how many women could I put my ding ding on their butt? You know what I'm saying? During probably the, about during fifty the out of a hundred. Yeah, I, that'll be there. I, Speaking of butts, that is my next topic. My next topic is asses, okay? I want to know something from you fellas, um, because the whole ass thing and the twerking thing and showing your ass thing is uh, uh, really big these days. Oh, and, really? um, I want to show you guys a picture, and, and I want you to tell me, is this too much ass? Because is there such thing as too much ass? Wow. Yeah. Is that too much? Yes. It's too much for Ziggy. It's too much for Mike. I mean, I'm not saying that what she's sitting on 22s. She's sitting on 75s. Eight. Eight. She's sitting on an eight. It's Zena. It's probably about what would y'all say? It's as wide as the door opening of her car. Yeah, you gotta piss. You gotta yeah, piss like piss. if you open the door all if you open the door all the way, the whole ass is in there. So I bet she'd be sitting on the armrest and the door. Bang bang. And that, the is, compartment in the middle. Is that too much? Yeah. I mean, Whoa. the only way you could do that is if you're breaking chops with your boys and you show them after. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, this is how you know it's too much, right? And you could you could bend your leg where all you can see is the meat. I'm talking about like ass smoking, right? Well, you got your legs out. You bend your shit where all you can see is the meat. And you put your knee between her two ass cheeks and it look normal. That's a problem there, man. No. I'm picturing that. I'm trying to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to picture what, that. You understand what I'm saying, greatness? You understand? If you, well, put then, a, if you, if you ball your motherfucking, your goddamn knee up right now. I had now, to do the visualize, visualize and you put, your, you, you put your knee between that thing like like, it, like it's your... Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get on my Bamba shit. I guess your cock, nigga. You put that shit in between and it look too... If it look normal... The ass way too big. Man, what the fuck you gonna do with that? If you I put a it, knee and a thigh in between some ass, well, what's the big normal? What's the big deal then? Why does everybody are they doing? Are are they claiming they like this, but they really don't like it when it comes to bedtime, or are they just like looking at it when it's twerking or in the strip club? I mean, I don't even know the niggas who like that OD shit like. That. I mean, a lot of them. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of them, or they wouldn't have them in every single video. I think Ziggy like well, that. That's what I think. I think Ziggy like that. The girls like it more than the guys. It seems like. I, said, uh, I know Girl. if you wasn't born, if you wasn't born with this shit, just, just, just leave it alone. This woman you know here that they just showed, or we, she, she was born like with that. that. Mike is the only. She got elephant titties, man. Yeah. Mike is Mike is the only man I know that's been fisted. That's been what? Fisted. If you know, if you know this, Ziggy, that it must have been coming from you, because no one else would know that. <laughs> so I got connection. I got connection. I heard you fight some Arabian goggles. <laughs> oh 
Oh yeah, I remember the Arabian goggles. That's when they put the yes, balls right. on the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you gotta wear glasses. <laughs> we went over that before. I'm telling you, if I did that, you'd be the only person that would know for a reason, buddy. Now, I, I have another question for you fellas. Uh, this is something that I was talking about this weekend for a certain purpose, but uh, I said, you know, you meet people online and you might want to hook up or something, go out on a date or go out on a just hook up. You see what I'm saying? But you don't know them. You and they're too G or whatever you call it to send you a picture of it. You know what I'm talking about? The fella's stuff. So Man, you say you say you want pictures of it from the rip. You like just send me a picture of it. No, this is what I'm getting hey, to. Hey, this now. is what I'm getting to. If you don't send me a picture, this is what I told my homie the other day. I was like, Well, okay, he's too G to send me a picture, so when he gets here, like as soon as I get in the car, I'm gonna be like, Hey, what's up? How you doing? Pull it out. Let me look at it. Because <laughs> if it's rough or something looks funny, you know, I mean, catfish. if it's rough, it's got to be smooth like a baby's ass. It can't be rough. So my thing was, would you guys be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? She just straight up talking about, let me see it as soon as she get in the car. Is that wrong? I don't think it's wrong. I want to mm. see what I'm getting ready to have. I mean, because want, I'm gonna be pissed off if I see later that something's rough or something's fucked up. You know, I mean, you, you mean, gonna, What you mean by rough? Right? Let's go back. People do not know what I'm talking about. Okay, meaning, like, oh. look, when you touch it, it feels rough. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, not like bumps, but like rough, like like a callus, like a hand that's been swinging a hammer that kind of or maybe <laughs> like like up. a huh like a, like a nigga just got a tree bark dick that's what you're saying like that. listen my thing is this if it feels rough there's something wrong with it yeah mm -hmm. it should be smooth the only thing you should feel is vain i'm talking about like sandpaper feels I mean, yeah but i'll be oh, okay. okay we can say the same thing about women i'll be <laughs> I, mean, I mean yeah I mean, I mean, what am I going to say when you get my car pulled out your pants? I want to see how rough it is. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I you know, what have. If you get, what if you get in the car and you say, open your pants? I want to see how it smells. Yeah. Hey, I'll come around Rose to your side. Okay, then if he does that, I'll, that's okay. I'll come around to your side. Well, on, here. Put your head nope. right up here. Nope, you got perfume and you got perfume and baby powder down there. You trying to hide something? Ew. <laughs> See, baby powder giving people cancer. See that on shit. TV, girl. If you if you if you have used baby powder, you can call this number and get some money from some lawsuit. But anyway, what I'm my point was this. Look at the picture Ziggy pumping away and powder flying everywhere. You stay away from that baby powder. <laughs> was was it was it wrong of me though? And what would they think of me if I got in the car straight up? Like, and I ain't trying to be funny with you, dude. But I just want to let me rub it or look at you know. And, I mean, if you got nothing to hide, then you're gonna show it. If you got a rough dick, then you're gonna keep it. But what does that say about me? I think that's good of me. Oh, but what if we pull out right and this is smooth, but it's a pencil dick? Then what you gonna do? You gonna be like, nah, I ain't trying to rock with you tonight. Let's cool out another time. I do get a pump. And no, I don't. I don't go there because it's not gonna happen again. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh. I'm gonna right. just say, well, it ain't gonna work out. Oh, it. it gotta. It gotta be. <laughs> get the fuck out smooth. my driveway. Can you drive me to the store and get some smokes? <laughs> so, get out my driveway. Get off my block. You know. You know how women be like, nah, his dick too little. Why? Why they don't never just be like, nah, my pussy just too big. Now, th mm. there's a problem with that. Yeah. It might not be the girl's <laughs> fault. Right, right. Because but that's what this I'm is saying. the thing I'm trying to say. Sometimes two people just don't work together well. You know what I'm saying? It can, like I told y'all before, it can be a little small. It's how you, what you do with it. it I mean, it, but sometimes it just don't work. It might work well with somebody, but it might not work well with you. Right. Well, Everything well, doesn't work well with everybody. True. A lot of niggas don't even know it. Like a, a, a lot of women, they G spot is right there as soon as you first get to the pussy, like right there, up there at the top. Mm. Tell them. 
Ziggy. <laughs> So is it wrong of me? I mean, now I don't know. I I think I I think I should test you. <laughs> oh, you're saying it gotta be it gotta be smooth and about the size of a Poland spring. No, uh, I don't one, care. I don't care about the size. I just don't Poland want that in the book. If it's rough, it makes me feel like that you did do something with sandpaper. Hey, wait, LB, is that the only test I got to pass to get with you? No. My, my I mean, pulled, hey, hey, Mike probably pulled his clothes off and shit. Hey, you know, hey, his legs but, and shit probably hairy in the motherfucker and the crack of the ass hairy. <laughs> hey. hey, man, I never got thrown out of a car. <laughs> I've never been told to leave. That's all I can say. The thing I'm that I asked y'all was, am I wrong for that? Hell no, you ain't wrong. Have you ever seen a scratchy one tell the truth? Yeah, I ain't never even heard of scratchy. I'm talking about That's greatness. True. Nestle crunched or... I'm Maybe. talking about... Are you I'm, saying... I'm talking about rough. Yes. Yeah, and something something's not right. All right, no. so what's the most fucked up one you ever seen? Well, they just need to stretch out some skin or something. I don't know. LB, what's the most fucked up one? Because I know I'm a okay. woman. I know what's the smelliest one. I, well, I say <laughs> I saw one that wasn't one. Like it, but, well, it wasn't one. It was like inside instead of outside. Dang. Oh, Dang. oh no, see. Here's no, what happened. Let me tell y'all what happened. It wasn't circumcised. Everybody at the trap house was on ecstasy. But that's not the point here. The point is this fella was sitting back in the chair, laid back, ready for this fun dummy. Her name was Kim. Hope you're watching, bitch. And when I was watching, you know, so I saw him unbuckle his pants and everything. And I was fucked up too. So I, I wanted to see what she was getting ready to get. I reached over to touch it. And there was nothing there. It was a blank spot. And I'm like, <laughs> what you what you mean a blank spot, right? Oh. It was a blank spot. Like it wasn't nothing. Like just rubbing nothing. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck, dude? You know what I'm saying? I looked at her. She didn't know yet. Because I just was like, I thought it was maybe up. I didn't go to the right spot. It might have been down just a little bit. <laughs> She come forward. When did she come out? Yeah, and it was about that big once it was done. <laughs> this much. Hold on. It's about about like that. Yeah, but see, a guy like that ain't got no right to pull his pants down. Listen, in a like well, that. I want to do it. Yeah, but I was on some shit. I left so hard that the next day, like my face was hurting. Like so bad from laughing, and I got up and I laughed all day. Like, <laughs> like, and I told him. Oh, how about you? Was, how about you, greatness? What's what's the most fucked up one you ever seen? I would say about like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I've saw, oh, no I've saw, way, no but way, I've saw no somebody way. else with something like that, and he's my homie. You know what I'm saying? And I've watched him like do people, and he goes hard like he really like like he's really doing something i know damn well i feel sorry for her or whoever <laughs> I've, I've seen him do it about three or four times one time on periscope remember mike the pregnant yeah. girl yeah 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 all right what is it you said he all right how big is he you said and he was going hard on the pregnant girl bitch. he has 10 kids and he it's this big and and when he does it he, he goes in like all out like he's just like bang 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 like he's really you know what i'm saying and i and i laugh so hard because i got on periscope one night when i was drunk and i pushed periscope and he was doing it and he was grabbing this pregnant chick's hair from the back <laughs> that was some funny shit. Under Ridgemont, that's under Ridgemont high, man. it goes down at the trap mm. okay remember it goes that. down in the trap uh, that was good. just my thing. Like I didn't want the guy to think I was like. But I mean that though. If you're a dude and you're in a situation like that, and you know you 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 look like that, then you shouldn't be pulling your pants out at all. Listen, it's very hard. <laughs> hey, for that shit. Well, 
think if you're a dude and, 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 and you're in a situation like that, just just get it, just get a girl, I like a, a Caitlyn, get a get a job done because you you like more than halfway there. Like that's embarrassing. Well, the thing with that's me like, is it's hard what enough. Do you do to, with that thing? It's hard enough to get that's me. Some people can't help. But it's hard enough to get me to come I'm out. Sure. And when I agree to come out, I feel like I should know everything that's going to happen before it happens. I need to see, touch, smell, all that. I'd rather be blind than have that happen. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the best Hey, Jeff, you know, one black. Now, with that being said, maybe that's the reason that this certain guy that I'm talking about stood me up over the weekend. Because he knew that I was gonna like see what was gonna go down before, and maybe he didn't have it together, or maybe it was rough. Well, I mean, the, show, the show's probably the show's probably good for for this reason only, because when some other dude watches this, I'll be he gonna not even get in that car if he's well, not well in doubt. So you just might. I, I, I don't care about well in doubt. I didn't say that. I said rough. R- you I, cannot who? be rough. Because I've had, see, there's something right there. Good. Well, I thought I was going to see something. Now, I mean, I'm, there, hold on. <laughs> no. I've had different kinds, but that it doesn't long. matter. That is long. That is long. All right, right Ziggy, what's the worst one you ever seen? <laughs> I don't understand those conversations. You know what I'm saying? Big kid, we're looking at right now. Big kid, we're looking at those conversations with my son. And you know what I'm saying? My son ain't got them problems, so I feel sorry for a grown ass man with them problems. My son eight years old, man. You know, so it's like tell yourself, man. You know, so I seen a whole documentary on that shit. The nigga was going to Thailand, all these places, trying to see if he wanted to get a bigger schlong. It's like that shit crazy. Find a chick that like that shit and stop mm-hmm. trying to force that little dick on everybody, man. You know, that's hey, the problem. It's somebody for everybody. Well, there's I, nobody for me. I, I don't. I don't. I, 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 a big body girl, so you can punish him. You know what I'm saying? Because they look at a little guy. Like, I'm not a little guy. You know, I'm nice and stature, but you know, I'm not one of the big bulky LL Cool Milk looking motherfuckers. I'm a regular <laughs> motherfucker. So I do ask the business underestimating me and fuck you up for the rest of your life. So it's like. I don't have those complexes that those really like. And that shit don't matter to me. I don't go into the, if you reach in the tip, it's smooth as you going to be turned off. It's like, I tell LBI up. I'm so funny like that. Okay, then, see? Steve, you better let her know. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the problem. Somebody else scared. They probably, uh... Now, I have seen the problems. <laughs> But uh, let me see if it's smooth the mic won't back up. I mean, like, Mike, you got to put your dick on the screen. We can't hear you. You're, he's going out. He's you on like location. Just... Yeah, he's he's going out. I think I say I should be showing my my junk on the screen, but... No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we don't want to get put off YouTube. No, okay. no, no. All you people out there watching, subscribe to us. Yeah, we're fucking insane in the chat.
out here. Block stars be the team. I don't know about that shit, man. CGE be the team. Just wait for it. We out here. Swallowing men, motherfucker.